For some reason, the UFC has decided to take Junior Dos Santos, Sagano, and Derek the Black Beast, my balls was hot, Lewis, to Wichita, Kansas, to headline a fight card. I think that's a weird decision, but nonetheless, it's a pretty decent event that's going down purely on ESPN+. And there are a few matchups that I think you need to pay attention to. My name's Flying Brian J, and here are the top three beyond the main event and co-main event for UFC Fight Night 146. Number three, Benyel Daryush versus Drew Dober. For quite a while, Daryush was a top 15 lightweight. He has submission victories over Darren Cruikshank and Tony Martin, a decision win against Michael Johnson and Jim Miller, and he was even the first guy to knock out James Vick. He was doing really well with pressure and volume early on against Ed Barbosa before getting knocked out. After a bit of a skid that started with that knockout from Barbosa, he got back in the win column in November. We once had high hopes for him, and I'm interested to see if he can start another win streak against Dober, who is admittedly on this list partially because he is from Nebraska. But more than just me being a homer, Dober has become a must-watch fighter for me because of his performances. The broadcast booth always talks about his Muay Thai background, which is what he used to knock out the likes of Jason Gonzalez and Josh Berkman, but he is also a well-rounded and durable fighter. When he does use his wrestling, he isn't content to just control his opponent on the mat. He always looks to improve his position and rain down ground and pound. Dober has been on the cusp of breaking into the top 15 for quite a while. Daryush used to be posted up there at the top of the division, and I'm intrigued to see which career path will go on the upswing. Number 2. Tim the Dirty Bird Means versus Nico the Hybrid Price Means can be described as one mean son of a gun. He doesn't go into the octagon thinking about MMA as a sport. It's a fight and he looks to inflict damage on his opponents. His long left straight often scrambles the consciousness of his opponents and his savage knees and elbows are always devastating. Although he is thought of as mostly a striker, he also sometimes uses his tall frame to score body lock takedowns where he will occasionally search for submissions, but mostly looks for violent ground and pound. Means has 19 knockout victories on his resume, but for some reason has only been awarded two post-fight bonuses. Nico Price hasn't been in the UFC for half as long as Means, but has the same number of post-fight bonuses. In seven trips to the Octagon, he is yet to go to the judges. You gotta love watching somebody who either wins spectacularly or ends up on someone else's highlight reel. He also possesses a similar amount of savagery as Means here. The way he knocked out Randy Brown from the bottom with hammer fist told me that he is one mean mamma jamma and also has scary power. Overall, he is a well-rounded athletic kid with a lot of potential and a knack for thrilling onlookers. Put these two killers in the octagon at the same time and we are nearly guaranteed to see a fight that ends with a stoppage and will be an absolute blast up until that point. And number one, Anthony Rocco Martin versus Sergio Marais. This fight is my top pick mostly because of how impressed I have been with Martin lately. Since moving back up to 170 pounds, he is on a three-fight win streak. The latter two of those fights ended with him scoring incredible finishes. A head kick KO of Ryan LaFlair and then a fun back-and-forth fight against Jake Matthews where Martin ended up sleeping Matthews with an anaconda choke. He is willing to get into wild exchanges, kind of like Cody Garbrandt, except for he shows quite a bit of durability. He has fantastic wrestling and BJJ skills for this division, and lately he has been sitting down on his punches and landing with a lot of power. On top of that, he has shown personality both during fights, think Nate Diaz style, and in post-fight interviews like when he called out funky Ben Askren. His opponent, Marais, isn't half as fun to watch in my opinion, but he has a goofy style that has always intrigued me. He is a BJJ wizard. In fact, after submitting Ben Saunders, who is a high-level jiu-jitsu player himself, he gave him a lesson backstage. Still, on occasion he has decided that he just wanted to engage in low-level technique, loopy punches style of kickboxing fights. When in his element though, the submission and overall grappling game, he truly is a treat. Like when he put Neil Magny in a triangle choke back in 2013. Pair the grappling of these two guys with the fact that we will likely have some fascinating, to say the least, kickboxing moments 
I see a thrilling fight taking place. Moreover, I think Rocco Martin continues his win streak and will be highly entertaining on the mic when it's all said and done. Thank you so much for making it to this point in the video. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and go to the bell down below so you get a notification whenever I drop a new piece of footage or film. Tell me in the comment section down below who you think is going to win the main event between Mr. My Balls Was Hot and Sagano, and I'll see you right here on this channel for the post-fight show where I'll be joined by probably the Eddie Mercado and Zane Simon. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste.